Hey guys, it's Kune, and on today's episode, I speak with the founder of a super successful agency, and he tells us why his agency spends 80% of their resources building and creating videos, video ads that just scale out 20x. You don't want to miss this one, do stay tuned. Hi guys, this is a warm welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast show. And on today's episode, I interview Moshe Saraf. Now, Moshe is the CEO and founder of a media buying um, ads agency based in Tel Aviv in Israel. And they predominantly work with social advertising. And the reason why you should watch this episode, you should you know listen on to this episode really is the fact that they take a totally radical approach to media buying on, on, on the Facebook advertising platform. So this episode is solely focused on the Facebook advertising platform and he's going to go through why 20% of their time is spent on campaign structure and they emphasize on the simplicity of a campaign structure and the remaining 80% of their their agency resources are put into creatives so they put all their resources towards creatives like 80 percent of the of the resources towards cre the creatives and it's quite interesting that the name of the agency is called pareto solution and if you know the the pareto principle it's 80 20. um so so essentially where they're really starting to make significant amounts of progress, where they're scaling 20x, they're moving, you know, um, campaign spend from 500,000 to 1 million plus in, in spend, scaling, you know, campaigns profitably is really the ability to m just work around with essentially creatives, video creatives, their, their specialism essentially is video creatives. And then they're just not, you know, creating the videos and then handing it over to clients. They're, they're actually building up the creatives, getting the desired result, and then scaling. So there's the full service media agency in that respect. You really should listen. Um, he talks about campaign structure. He talks about how your video ad should actually look like, be presented the first few seconds, what it should look like in the middle, um, his take on, um, on, on subtitles. It's a super interesting conversation from a very, very clever lad who, you know, um, has the results to show. He's worked with a ton of you know direct to consumer businesses and we're talking mixed tiles um, we're talking nectar sleep we're talking um, flex belt and we're talking upright so it, it's definitely one to you know um, listen in to now um, before i let you go remember this show is sponsored by two major providers in the direct to consumer e-commerce space one is clavio Clavio do email marketing at scale, you know, email automation based on behaviors and actions of what your customers are doing or shoppers are doing on site. You create very tailored messages towards them. And we have Rewind Backups, which is the number one backup solution on the Shopify and big commerce, you know, um, app space, essentially. And they will help you back up in the event of anything you know getting wrong essentially and if you use 2x e-commerce they give you a 30-day free trial just go to their website rewind.io and yeah you you get there now um finally if you haven't already join the facebook group just search for 2x e-commerce on facebook and you'd find us to connect with us all I can say now is enjoy this conversation I have with Moshe. It is one of the most detailed. I think if you're ambitiously looking to grow um, a, a massive direct-to-consumer e-commerce business, a significantly impactful direct-to-consumer e-commerce business, 
or you're looking to gain inspiration as an agency, a Facebook advertising agency, this episode is for you. So stay tuned. Hi, 2Xers. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast. You're on. This is a podcast dedicated to rapid growth in online retail. I'm your host, Kune Campbell. And um, essentially, if you're looking to grow metrics such as conversions, average order value, repeat customers, traffic, and ultimately sales, well, you're, you're on the right show. And you know, my promise to you is I bring on experts like the top in the game in specific areas in online retail and direct to consumer e-commerce that will move the needle in your brand. And today is, is a, is, is just one such example. Now today we're going to be talking about Facebook, but you know, I've brought a lot of people who talk about Facebook and, you know, talk about the technical, the, all the technicalities of Facebook, you know, this is how you structure your campaigns this is what we do. These guys are creative focused agency and they're doing crazy numbers. I mean, some ad accounts that they're running have seven figure, um, you know, spend per month. So I'm talking about 1 million plus spend per month. Um, they're based out in Tel Aviv in Israel and they're just doing crazy, crazy, crazy things. Um, and what I really like about what they're doing is, is their model, the unique model, which is a creative leasing model. And that's why on today's episode, we're going to be focused on creatives. You know, what makes creatives, what makes the best creatives on Facebook actually tick? And um, Moshe is, 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 is just going to, to break everything down. Now, Moshe is the co-founder and CEO of Pareto Solutions, their performance marketing agency. And as I said, the creative leasing model, they, they use a creative leasing model for Facebook advertising. They do a bit of Snapchat advertising and also do Google AdWords. Um, you'd have seen it, you'd have, some of these brands will make sense to you. Um, they used to work with Mextile. Um, they work with Nectar Sleep, if you know them, um, they're, they're a direct to consumer, you know, a mattress company. They work with Flex Belt. They work with Upright. Um, you, you will most likely have seen ads from one of these brands. So they work exclusively with direct to consumer e-commerce businesses that are aggressively looking to scale. And, you know, I, I love how they bring their intro, whether they just say we are aggressive and we're the best at what we do. And, you know, I'd been looking for, 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 for them for a while. Anyway, I'm not going to talk too much about the intro. I'd just like to welcome Moshe. Moshe, welcome to the show. It's an honor and a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much. It's fun to be here. And thank you for saying my name right. It's like the, the first time ever. Before we kick off today's show, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Did you know that cloud-hosted e-commerce platforms like Shopify and BigCommerce do not provide automatic backups? Rewind steps in to protect Shopify and big commerce stores with automatic backups. Rewind is trusted by over 25,000 stores. Install Rewind and get to test it for free over seven days. And to extend the seven day trial to 30 days, head over to rewind.io, their website, and mention 2x e commerce. Well, thanks. You sent me. A, you sent me a YouTube video. I didn't have yeah. a. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um. So first of all, you know, I I can't hide my excitement. You know, um, because there's this debate about media buying in terms of like account structure and um creatives in terms of like you know the creative and and the analytical bits of the brain. I, I know the anal analytical bit of the brain is, of you know, analytical bits of, of setting up campaigns is really important but you cannot you cannot you cannot um just ignore the creative so what's your take on um on creatives in facebook how important are creatives as compared to other aspects in a facebook account that is about to scale uh, specifically for e-commerce because for other yeah. niches uh, we're talking totally different but for e-commerce i think creative is like 80 percent of your success wow. um because again, we saw it for B2B clients like Blue Vine and so on. Uh, the creative was important, but not as like you can reduce cost by 20% and so on. 
but for each and every other client that we have that is uh, D2C, uh, e-commerce, hardcore, uh, usually we come, we see the account, we can't really teach them a lot of new stuff about the structure. Sometimes we do, but most of the time it's a professional in-house team, they know what they're doing. And they already have video and they already have creative and so on. But with creative, you can basically cut CPA in 50% or scale. Like a record is like scaling a company 20x, but uh, usually you can scale them even, uh, you know, two or three X really, really fast and then gradually uh, scale more. Uh, so yeah, the creative is key in my opinion. Uh, like you can, you can succeed with a really shitty structure and a great creative, but you can't succeed with the most amazing structure and a bad creative. That's, that's a very, very, very good, good way of putting it. I recall speaking to um, someone at Facebook a few years ago and he was like telling me like the big players, uh, the, the big conglomerates just focus on creatives, you know, like, as you said, 80% of the time as compared to, um, you know, many other, you know, players who, who are just um, thinking about lookalikes, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about the 20%. Let's not ignore that 20%. And then after we talk about the 20%, we'll jump right into the 80%. Okay, so from, a, from an account setup, you know, um, structure, what should we essentially be looking at? A amount of signals. Basically, especially on Facebook, which has very good uh, machine learning tools like uh, Insight, uh, you have to have ads that are big enough but targeted enough to get significant amount of signals, which means uh, if you have an account with 100 ad set, even if you're huge, like uh, usually it's a bad account. Um, let's say for example, I'm, I'm not gonna put names, but uh, we come to a client, they had like a lot of look like they have the, the onion method, like 1% and then 2% and 3%, and it worked really well. It's, it was an okay account, uh, but then we cut it and we just do broad and uh, because the, the product was mass market, uh, we knew exactly, you know, the age and the uh, demographic and so on. We targeted only them and we got scale like, you know, like instantly. Why? Because when you try to, Facebook is doing the testing and uh, it's called the one arm robber method, which is basically a statistical method that is similar to A-B testing, but uh, with some guesswork. I'm not going to go into the math, but with some guesswork. If you give it a very small sample size, uh, it's going to get you horrible results. It's going to take you a while to test the creative. It's going to get you, uh, like every week that passed with bad creative, you're losing money. Mm -hmm. um, so ideally, you have to uh, aim to 10 sales per ad sets per day minimum. Like if you have less than that, uh, your structure is too granular, uh, you, you have to open up. Uh, also, um, I see like a lot of structure that is limited by budget instead of bids. Um, which is also a big mistake because budget shouldn't be the limitation. If you get like enough sales, let's say a, a client is worth you $50. That's it. That's what you can pay. Put a bid for $50, put cost cap, open the budget to, I don't know, 10, 10K per day. It's okay. Like just, you know, let it run because Facebook needs a sample size. Uh, it's going to average on your conversions, uh, on your con uh, target CPA. It's going to be okay. But don't limit too much the signal because then what's happened uh, with every machine learning model without uh, enough data, it just collides. It's, you know, the under delivery uh, stuff that everybody is complaining on, it's just because the structure is too narrow and then the machine learning algorithm can't really operate. Super interesting. So you, so without campaign history, you, you just open it wide to get, um, to get sufficient signals. If Obviously, you, if you know, it's new, it's, it really depends. But mm. let's say the basic structure, which is different to every client, but the basic structure, we start with a 1%, then we start with board, uh, and then see what, what's, what's, work, uh, what's work best and start diverting uh, budget until I see what's, 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 what's working better. But right now, I think the majority of our, again, D2C clients, it's board. Like yeah. it's one ad set with board and one ad set for remarketing and that's it, just the account. And we're talking about, uh, like, I don't think we have an account smaller than uh, uh, 500K per month. So it's not like small accounts. Yeah. Um, and then we have two ad sets. Just two, two, two ad sets, two, yes. two campaigns or two. How many, how many campaigns do you have? Uh, usually two as well. Like we do one ad set, one campaign. Do, do, do you use like dynamic creative um, ads or? Um... Rarely because we like to do the test manually, um, but that's a preference. 
like uh, you mm -hmm. can do it dynamically as well. Uh, why do you like it? Just because we have internal tools that play nicely, they present better uh, the manual uh, option. Okay, okay, okay. Um, two questions. Um, a lot of the brands you work with sell one, maybe three products. Um, you know, they, they sell a very specific solution to, you know, like a pink, they're mainly painkiller, you know, brands. Yeah. Um, in a situation in which like you're a fashion brand and you have like a catalog of, um, you know, drops, say you have um, 100 SKUs or even 500 SKUs, what approach would you take um, to, towards you know, structuring out the campaign? That's actually a great question because it's a problem we, we struggled with a lot in the past when we started accepting fashion brands. And what we usually discover that even in a, like a major fashion brand, uh, three or four items are the delivering uh, basically 50% of sales. Look at the... Uh, we saw that it was like a, a bra company just got sold, uh, Briola. Uh, it was like the one bra that opens, uh, for, that closed from the front. It's like a big thing, apparently. I don't know why. Uh, if you open a bra uh, brand, remember like the opening should be in the front. Uh, anyhow, but that's like 30% of sales. Uh, like this one brand and they have thousands of products and with every company we had like uh, Zikre which is also a fashion very strong fashion uh, brand and free dresses that's it but it's not always the same free dresses so what we did we understood and also there is stock issues uh, like you sell all the the top products and that's it and then you get stuck and then you have mm -hmm. like this this weird graph that is you know you, uh, sales spike nothing sales spike nothing and uh, the client hates you <laughs> because uh, you, you're giving him heart attacks. Uh, so we started to do discovery campaigns via Instagram, which means basically we uploaded, uh, usually fashion brands have tons of organic following. Uh, we upload the, the products beforehand uh, to Instagram. We basically measure engagement, organic engagement. And then we start pushing only the, the ones that get like tons of organic engagement. So these are like posts, normal organic posts to, to Instagram. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is like, not every brand will give you that flexibility to, to post to Instagram organically. I, I have firsthand experience in exactly what you're talking about, where you see, you look at the engagement metrics. Okay. You know, that works. And, and that's like testing essentially you're testing with, with organic traffic, especially if the Instagram, you know, um, account is, is a big one is a substan has a substantial following, but how do you get the brands to, to say, okay, we're trusting you with this. Or do you just look at what they've posted and then just unpick all the high engagement posts with the products in there? It's uh, actually, they send us like a feed of the products and also they mm -hmm. mark what they think is interesting. Uh, okay. we, we add our own feedback. They post it, like we don't touch the organic traffic. Even We can do it actually, but they prefer they do it. And, uh, uh, but then what we both agree as a good potential, because we are, you know, we're humans, we can see what people bought before and what people like. Uh, we post on Instagram because we don't want to post too much because then it, you, know, you, you get nothing. Um, and usually let's say you don't have amazing success rate in guessing what people would buy. <laughs> I mean, like when you post it, but after mm -hmm. you get the data, you have like really good, like if a lot of people liked it, uh, so you have 80% chance it's going to be a new hit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then what does your creatives look like in that situation? Um, would they be static images or would they be, um, you know, video again of, of the product of, of the dress or the, the, the shirt or. Uh, it depends, like, what we discovered about uh, the, the let's say, female shopping experience, or not a clothes shopping experience specifically, is that there are a lot of specific uh, parts of the clothes that are super relevant. So sometimes we show it, let's say uh, there is a specific uh, cuffs or specific clothes or buttons or stuff like that, or with the bra, uh, we talked about the specific clothing from the font and so on. Yeah. Um, we focus on that. Sometimes we shoot it on video. Sometimes we just show it like uh, we take an image, but we do zoom, you know, like cubes of zoom specifically on the point. Uh, sometimes we do it as, as carousel. But the point is they need like specific knowledge about the stress. They want to, so, you know, it's like when you go to a store, they, they feel the dress and they touch specific yeah. parts. So I say, okay, which parts are going to touch? What, what they want to know? That's what they're going to show them. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Um, so, so, so essentially keep it simple. That's what you're saying from a campaign structure standpoint. So you get those signals and, and then you focus a lot on the creatives. Yeah, exactly. Because okay. improvement in creative, it can double you, but improvement in structure, after again, you have normal structure, it's not going to double you. 
Okay. 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 Let's talk about creatives and let's talk about your agency. Um, what's, what's your business? I, I talked very briefly about it. What's the structure of, um, of how you work? You, you say your, your, your creative le- leasing model, how, how does it work to, so listeners can, can better understand? Uh, cool. So basically it came because uh, we did a lot of mistakes. We were young and stupid. Uh, and we started with a small companies, make them a lot bigger. And the natural process that happens is uh, you take a company, they spend right now 50K per month. Uh, they start spending a million dollars per month. And then they are not going to pay you 150K per month for long because they have investor, they have whatever, and they're going to pay internal team. Uh, so we're going to take the, your creative, your structure, your work and just copy it, either reshoot it or, uh, you know, just reuse it because our contract was very stupid back then. Uh, and it happened to us twice. And then we understood we were like, we're in the wrong business. We're basically in the business of uh, delivering value to someone else. And then someone else is going to enjoy f- the fruits of our labor. Yeah. Uh, so right now what we're doing, like in the last uh, year or so, which is very successful, uh, we come to a, you know, a company that already have like a, a major spell on Facebook. Usually again, 500K per month, million dollars per month. And we tell them, I don't want your entire account. Uh, I don't want to fight with the internal team because usually the internal team are, are quite good and uh, they just need uh, sometimes a better st- campaign uh, structure and a lot of them much better creative, but they don't have an incentive to use my creatives because I'm the enemy and uh, they won't, don't want to copy my uh, campaigns. Uh, even now with the new model, they copy it and call it Pareto. So because we're friends right now. Uh, so in the end, we, we just take a part of the, of the traffic. Let's say uh, the client spends a million dollars per month. I tell him, okay, I'm going to take only uh, 200K. Uh, I'm going to run it. I'm going to uh, charge my agency fee, which is a bit more expensive, 18%. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot uh, ads. I'm going to pay for the ads. You're not going to pay for them. You don't care about them. Uh, but you have full visibility to my account. So first of all, your initial value that if you see my campaigns are better, you can just copy them and use them. Uh, I'm still managing my own, but you can you know, have a clone in, in your, which a lot of them do. Um, and secondly, um, so, so they my, give you, they give you 200 K yeah, and then, give, and then you, you charge 18% on the 200 K. Now with the 200 K, do you spend all that on media buying or do you, would you, where, where, where do you get the creatives? Do you spend it bit of that on the creatives? I spend for my fee on the creative, the 200 K goes directly to media. Got it. Got, um, it. Got it. And they see it, like it's connected to their account. They have full transparency there. Um, so in that case, the 200, you, so out of the 36 K fee, yes, you, uh, you, you still figure out how to get the creatives done. Yes. Because my fee is actually much bigger because of the leasing model. <laughs> Basically, let's say I run uh, for a month. Uh, yeah. I spend a lot of money on production. Let's say I got, uh, my fee was only uh, 36 K and I spent actually 40 K on productions. Uh, but uh, then my, then I managed to cut CPA significantly. Uh, the clients really wants the creative. Uh, and then I say, okay, of course you can use it. Like whatever you see in my account, you can use, uh, but you pay a fee and the fee is not uh, 18% it's 7.5% if, if they use it on their account. Okay. Um, but their account is a million dollars per month. <laughs> so, okay, makes uh, sense. And, and you're not, you're not, you're not managing it for them that you're leasing yeah. out the creatives. Exactly. And, and we just measure how much they use it. It's pay as you go. Uh, and for them, I just need to beat their creative, like they're going to get by 7.5% for this to be cost effective. Yeah. So, so and, this is a very TV advertising. This is what they do in TV advertising. Um, well, it's very creative focused and they test and test and test till, till they find something that's really optimized and, and they go with it. Um, the testing is uh, like our testing, I think we're going to talk separately about the testing because I think we have the very different testing methodology than what's uh, common in the industry. Uh, but basically, even after the third or five, fifth revision, usually we have like a very good video. Um, and from them, we just improve it. Improve it either by editing or by reshooting because uh, the product is changing or we miss something which happens. And then we ha- you have to reshoot just because you missed the key point and we talk about it uh, separately. Um, but, uh, again, the, the model is, um, like the, if they see it's good, they're going to use it. If not, okay. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be break evenish and then, you know, okay. the pilot's over. Okay. So, 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 so just to summarize, um, we're spending, say we're spending 500 K a month, you know, on, in AdWords for our D2C company. Um, we, we approach Pareto, um, 
we give you 200k to test well to 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 test to you to manage yep. um you take 18 percent of the back of that you create a full campaign your own accounts and campaign which we have visibility and access to um, you deliver results and if those results are much better than what we are delivering internally or with our current agency um you say okay yes you could use our creatives we will we'll pot all, all all we're doing over from here to your account but you're going to pay us 7.5 percent Yes, I'm, I'm still managing, by the way, the, the original 200K per month because I always keep producing and keep shooting uh, because creative also get, on get the tired. Side. Yeah. Okay. So um, would, would the 200K keep rolling on the yeah. side or? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're, they're constant. Cause otherwise, can't really keep producing. And that's my safety net, basically, for okay. the production cost. And that, that's also taking 18%. So you're taking 18% yeah. on that 200K and then you're taking 7.5% on the ads that yeah. you're leasing out to, to the to the creator. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. Clavio is a growth marketing platform that powers over 25,000 online businesses. Clavio understands every single customer interaction and empowers brands to create more personalized marketing moments. Listen, analyze, and act on your customer data with Clavio. Visit clavio.com forward slash 2x. And the proof is in the pudding because you, you have, you know, the kind of clients you have. Um, so, so which clients are you doing this with right now at the moment? Um, Nectar is the biggest one, I think, because yeah. they're like a huge company. Huge, um, yeah. uh, Upright also. I'm looking for D2C because uh, some of my, we have a lot of B2B clients, but I don't want to talk about them right now. It's yeah, no, no. Totally we, we're, we're, we're an e-commerce, we're an e-commerce um, podcast, so, so no, no. Yes. No. Um, um, Biomedical, uh, Biomedical actually, Biomedical is a two companies, the Flex built in the US and Sanaton in Europe. Uh, actually, they, because they're a very old account, they actually just pay, we manage everything, so there is no internal team, so their fee is a bit lower. Um, okay. They're also a huge account. Uh, I can't share the numbers, but it's like an amazing account with amazing results. Um, and, and these guys always tend to be like painkiller you know, um, you know, painkiller brands, they're, they're not necessarily like vitamin where, you know, um, you're trying to convince people that you need them. They work. Once you demonstrate in the videos, I, I guess, um, you know, it's the way you demonstrate how these products solve problems exactly. that, that actually, you know, um, um, drives those conversions. I, I, I would think there is a unique challenge. Like, let's say, let's take the flexible. The flexibility is like the the belt that you put on the on your tummy, and yeah. basically it uh, electrify you and uh, make your uh, you know activate your muscle, and then you get you don't get six pack, but you get a firmer uh, tummy. And okay. the issue is that uh, people don't believe in it. Uh, like we, I don't. Even, <laughs> I yeah. don't. Uh, so, uh, like, if you were, uh, like in the office, I would show you in a second, and that's what we do in the All video, right. by the way. Uh, All right. Because people don't believe it because it sounds magical. Uh, and then yeah. we got the product to the office and there is like levels. And because we are you know, sadistic, uh, we just put it on the max level and connect it to people and saw the reaction. And first of all, the, the muscle like jumps, how to explain, but it's like the muscles are like contracting in a way that they're <laughs> going on. So, okay. So first of all, you saw the pain and you saw the muscle, con muscle contracting. I said, okay, this, this is working. And then all we right. say, okay, this is our creative. <laughs> we just <laughs> <laughs> to take more and that's what we do basically we take like people with uh apps that we can shoot and we show them like we do uh, we put it uh, on a not the highest level because we're not that evil but you know and we just show the contraction and show their pain expression and then people understand yeah this is yeah. this is what it's doing it's working because it's not magical you show the pain yeah um which solve the trust and with this creative uh, i think i think i'm sure we we took the sales like within two months, uh, a 600% increase. It was insane. And still like every month is the best month we ever had. Wow. Well, uh, you, you also month, work with, with the card, with the credit card company, Plio. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, but that's like, again, it's not that's a bit different. Insane, but yeah, but yeah. It's an amazing product, by the way. I wish yeah. they come to like to the US and Israel. Uh, yeah. uh, we tried developing before we knew like something very similar in-house, uh, something that reports automatically to your accounting system and so on. Uh, but they solved it like uh, perfectly. It's an amazing product. Interesting. 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 And, and there's another trend I'm seeing with creatives. I was speaking to, to, a, to, a, um, to a video production guy 
Um, so like three, four years ago, there was this trend of, um, you know, telling stories with subtitles and it used to work, you know, so you just put, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, But now it's, there's, there's more graphics, you know, if you want to show like, I'm I'm looking at the upright creatives you have and you're showing like, you're, you're putting some graphics that align, that show the alignment, you're showing arrows. It seems a lot more interactive. There's, There's a lot more modern upgraded that. There, there, there are a lot more graphics that you know yeah. kind of supports how the product works, which also show feelings, which demonstrate feelings, how you will feel. Um, I, I hope that's the best way of putting it. But, no, exactly, yeah. because uh, subtitles, uh, we call them, like we have uh, internal guidelines, so one of them is subtitles are the enemy, because then uh, mm. instead of showing, you just start telling stories. Okay, exactly. Uh, and we started like, uh, not really punishing, but if you have like more than three words in the, in the frame, like uh, we need to talk. Sometimes it's correct, but, uh, but that's mean you're, not, you're just doing random edit and adding text. Exactly. Uh, and so, so we try to, that, to make a cohesive creation where uh, they actually, if you have text or if you have a graphic, it's complementary to the product. Let's say in upright, uh, the other creative, the newest one, uh, you haven't seen it, I think, is showing specifically, we took uh, like a, a dancer and we show exactly how her back moves and you put like an overlay of the, how do you call it, you know, the back muscles basically and showing exactly how to stand straight and how, uh, you know, how to do stuff. We actually force it to do it, uh, doing a handstand because then it's much more clear to see the back. Exactly. Um, but if we would just say instead, like I saw a competitor ad, uh, straight in your back, whatever, whatever, nobody cares about text. Like, Again, some people care, but most of them don't. Uh, I don't come to Facebook to read like long stories. I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just give me the meat. Give it to me. Exactly. Exactly. And it's much more easier to consume with the sound off if you have those graphics supporting your story rather than, you know, subtitles. Um, it's the, the evolution. You know, you guys are at the cutting edge. You're, you're, you're at the cutting edge of the evolution of what video, you know, should be that people, you know, can interact with, especially from their mobiles, um, which, which, which I find very, very, very fascinating. Okay. Um, so what tips, what tips? Uh, that's just one thing I observed, but I'm sure you have other tips and guidelines for creating great ads for Facebook and perhaps even Snapchat mm-hmm. and YouTube. Uh, yeah, Snapchat, Snapchat is too long because it's super complex. And frankly, mm-hmm. though we are very successful on Snapchat, uh, it's a nightmare every time to create a creative there. So We're going to talk <laughs> about it in a separate, <laughs> yeah, separate episode call. for sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, let's, let's focus on Facebook. Uh, but by the way, Snapchat, as a, as a tip, is a money machine. Like we're basically printing money for our clients. So, uh, mm-hmm. The easiest stuff uh, ever. Uh, Facebook... Facebook in general, we treat the creative as a landing page, but you know, as a hard sale landing page. So the first thing when you do a landing page, you have uh, the title is the most important because if the title is not there, and if it's not right, it's not explaining what you're going to get, you're just going to, you know, bounce. So we think the same about Facebook. We think I have like a split second to get the person. Uh, even if the second frame is amazing, I don't care because they're not going to see it. And we know because we tested it. Like, uh, we just started shooting, like, in one of the old uh, Christmas ads for uh, mixed styles. We had, like, twins that are playing. So, and the director told me, I want to add a frame of the twins just fixing the camera. It was very cute. Uh, before they start the video, I told him, you can do it this version, but it's going to fail. And we ran both versions, like, you know, we uploaded them together. Uh, after, like, six hours, uh, his version spent, like, I don't know, 200K and lost 200 dollars or something obscene. Nobody watched it. And the version, just without the, this, like, half a second frame, spent already 20K. Spent, mm-hmm. I mean, w- within bid, so cost-effective. Uh, so the first thing is, the first frame is the most important. The beginning is the most important. If you don't have that, nothing else matters. Uh, and what should be in the first frame? Not, uh, not a clickbait, because it's really hard to make a good clickbait. Like, you can, Harmon Brothers can do it, but most people don't. It costs a lot of money, so don't. Uh, either the key value or the key pain. Uh, like, either what you get and, or, or what I'm going to save you from, but in the most concise and uh, an accurate way to measure it. Like, you saw the ad on uh, Upright, for example. I show, like, uh, uh, back, straight back and, and not straight back, and that, that's what you get. I'm not going to talk about your emotion. I'm going to talk about uh, whatever self, uh, I don't know, 
be sure of yourself or what, nobody cares. I know th- those are stuff you get from having a straight back, but th- that's not the key value. What about the thumbnail image? Does it connect with the first frame or can they be different? Like we did a lot of tests with the thumbnail and I don't have a conclusive uh, uh, answer to give you. Like we, every test we do is uh, something else. So we just do pretty stuff. Uh, but uh, if there are no results, it's also, it's also a result. So my, my result is it's not significant as. Mm. Why? Because of the autoplay. Uh, on YouTube, I think it's going to be different. I'm going to need to organic and stuff like that. But on Facebook, most of the time, it doesn't matter. Okay. 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 So, so that first frame is super important. You communicate key value or your key pain you're trying to solve. Um, so what, what is, what is, what follows? What about sound? We, we use sound, but in very different than the way that other people do, uh, do it. First of all, one of the guidelines is uh, you have to treat like the, the user is mute. Um, like the sound is for, is for us, not for the user, but it's okay. for us. Uh, the video should be totally understandable uh, on mute because a lot of people are watching videos on mute. Um, but we use the sound basically to cut the video in a specific pacing. Why? Because people... Um, uh, they want their data, like when you see a video, you see like a frame, and then you see like a very long shot, boring shot, boring shot, boring shot, and then you leave. Yeah. So you say, no, I have to have like a static pace, and then after I saw like three cuts, I'm going to stay because I know exactly with the beat. And every video we have, like you say, tuck, tuck, you have like info, 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 info. It's very static. Uh, so uh, that's why we always have a percussion video music, just because it's, you know, it's stable, and then then we can see that the cutting is, is done in a proper way. So okay. basically, the, all the music is for us <laughs> okay. to see that the edit is right. And it's, it's that tempo, because I noticed you use a lot of drums and it's, it's very upbeat. And, yeah. you know, um, so it's just for the tempo, for the, yeah, to, to set a specific tempo. Tempo, okay. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Do you want to take us through a creative? So for those on our YouTube channel, they, they, they can just you know, have a look. Um, I think I've made you a co-host of this call. Yes, one sec. Boom. Okay. Just share screen, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, just share screen. Okay, I haven't used Zoom in a while now. So it's and... it's a green button at the lower... Yeah, yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, you see my screen, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, I'm going to mute it. Oh, yeah, no. Sure. No, but I'm going to do it with sound for a second just to okay. understand the part of the beat. Okay, so, so there's, there's, there's a tatted up girl. So yeah. But is, you notice is that, that intentional? Uh, yeah, actually, it is intentional uh, because we are trying to make the first frame very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, uh, so we try, it, it's a test. Uh, it's a test, yeah. Because that caught my attention. Yeah, up, exactly. You know. She's a very she's, cool girl. Actually, yeah. she works like in my building, like in my, she's a hairdresser and I saw okay. her, I said, okay, let's cast her. I think she, she looks interesting, like uh, the back tattoo I never seen like, uh, like that. But if you notice, I'm going to play it with sound for a second. Notice the beat of the drums exactly with the frame, with the edit. Yeah. So you notice that like every, every time I do a cut, there is like a beat with it. And that's exa- and. It just keep you like in the same, uh, in the flow. You yeah. Just, you don't bounce. Now I'm going to play it without the sound. But, uh, and then you see that we do use text here, but it's very specific. It's very... The, the, the captions, more or less, they're, they're, not, they're, they're, they're not more than, you know, from f- four words. Yeah. And, and and sometimes we do have, but like in the, in the finish when uh, nobody should. cares. Exactly. Yeah. They're captions. They're, they're summary yeah. captions of what we're seeing improve okay. your posture and then you show something when you slouch and then you show you know frames yes it's, it's more humans you, the, I, I see a lot of human beings you know right? so what would you suggest would you uh, well I, I guess it's the product in action on human beings yeah, exactly the product in action but uh, human beings are uh, it's a tricky thing because sometimes uh, the director will get caught on it he's trying to get like a human reaction but he missed the product Okay. Uh, so we try not to focus, like even though we show face and we show pretty people and so on, we try to, to make the product first uh, and not the human being first. And okay. w- why? Just because to overcompensate, because we, we know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, basically, the director always fall in love with their subjects and 
no, they do their faces and so on. <laughs> Nobody care about the uh, close up of a pretty girl because they don't mm. know her and it's Facebook and you know, uh, it's not something you haven't seen before. Yeah, exactly. Um, what about the what does yeah. your creatives team look like you you you're a creative first agency so what's the balance how many creatives do you have um versus technical media buyers most of our team are creative people because okay, so, uh, so you're 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 your head of creative where does it come from a tv background what what's the uh no what's actually his, what's his we, profile? We, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors did you know that cloud-hosted e-commerce platforms like Shopify and BigCommerce do not provide automatic backups? Rewind steps in to protect Shopify and BigCommerce stores with automatic backups. Rewind is trusted by over 25,000 stores. Install Rewind and get to test it for free over seven days. And to extend the seven day trial to 30 days, head over to rewind.io, their website and mention 2x e-commerce. He used to be a director, but of uh, like student films and so on. We, we okay. basically shaped him because people with experience are actually, like he has a ton of technical experience, but not the TV experience because people mm-hmm. from TV or even from uh, other, other agencies, they're usually tainted. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're uh, hard to change, right? They, yeah. Uh, and, they're hard to... and they try to tell me about, you know, narrative, like a lot of stuff that are very beautiful if you want to do a TV show. But actually, I think, no, not even for a TV show. Like, I see most of the stuff they shoot and uh, it's okay. It's like, uh, it, it, the story is shit, you know, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no matter. But, um, so we try to educate them in-house. Like, they're all technically excellent. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, the structure, like what they're going to shoot and the structure and the, and the edit is... Uh, uh, we dictate it in advance. Like we have a very, uh, very strict structure. Basically, again, it's like uh, writing a document to how to build a lang- landing page. So I write uh, mm-hmm. how to build a video. So yeah. they have freedom on specifically how to shoot and so on. But sometimes I also uh, get, no, this angle is going to show not enough the product. This is uh, too far and so on. Um, but they're not technicians. They do have art. Like in the end, what I wrote and what we have, it's not the same. But uh, we try, but, it's still, it's still the same, but not the same. You know what I mean? It's not what like they imagine. guidelines. Yeah. Um, and also for me, from every production, we have uh, multiple versions, uh, usually like at least five. Um, and some of them look very similar. Some would look very, very different. Uh, and they will perform very differently in the end. And, uh, so uh, about the creative, basically most of the company are creatives. Like we have uh, mm-hmm. free account, uh, call them a... Performance director because uh, the amount they pay, they can be directors in a company, <laughs> uh, which are basically borderline geniuses or full geniuses, depends how you say, see it. Uh, and they run, run all the technical stuff. Um, we also have a lot of uh, internal teams that do automation, so it's much easier now to run accounts. Frankly, I could like hire lesser people, we just don't wanna. Um, so the media buying is almost not automated, but semi-automated, but the creative is not something we can automate. We tried, but okay. Uh, okay. not going to work. Okay. So we have Nectar Sleep here. What, what's, what's, the, 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 what's the structure like in the Nectar Sleep creative? So with Nectar, we discussed about showing pain and pleasure. Uh, with yeah. Nectar, we, we made a huge mistake, uh, <laughs> like in the first creative, first version. Okay. Uh, I was like in, a, I talked with their CEO I, in, and so on. And they t- told us their creation story and told us a lot about comfort and how comfort is important. These surveys and they have tons of data that showing that comfort is the most important thing. Uh, so we did this uh, amazing creative that shows like uh, comfortable sleeping. It was like a, a girl falling with a mattress and still sleep and whatever. And it was a complete and utter failure. Um, and then we understood, okay, we, like, we trusted the client to do the analysis. We, we instead of us, our analysis process is very long. We, we read the comments, we read the support tickets. You know, we, we try to understand what, what the people are actually saying, not what the client says, mm. that the uh, important people. It's like conversion rate optimization, really. Uh, it's, yeah. very, it's the same process, frankly. Yeah. It's like yeah. uh, we go to Gong.io and listen to uh, the calls and, and, you know, we do everything. Uh, okay because production is so expensive, you have to know everything before you start. Um, and then we understood that people just want basically to, they have like 
in the end, they have a shitty mattress, they want to replace it with a new mattress, and they want it to be cheap. Like, and that was like uh, real analysis. It took us two weeks to do a re- reshooting, mm-hmm. uh, which was, again, very expensive to us, but it was worth a while in the long run. So you guys are based in, in, in Israel, in Tel Aviv, yeah. and um, Nectar is based where? Nectar is based everywhere, frankly, but uh, because they're very diverse, kind of, New York, London, um, <coughs> I think some other cities, they, they're a very modern, high-tech company. They work remotely and so on. So how do they ship mattresses to your creative team to, to get, um, you know, um, for, for you to, to shoot the creatives? Oh, it was a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> basically, we had to be licensed as importer. Well, it, it was, uh, usually it's much easier. Usually you just get stuff by the mail. But with mm-hmm. Nectar, it's, uh, it's so mattresses it's, and dates. It's mattress, and, exactly. And it's not just one because we wanted, like, we did, did a list and just sent the entire list. I, I was thinking they're going to cut half of it. But no, and now we have a full room in the office that is full of beds and mattresses. Whoa. Because they have an amazing new product. It's like a bed, but it's, um, as I would say, it's like convertible bed. It, you can also align it. It's like amazing shit. And we saw it and, and it's saying, why aren't we selling this? Why, why are we selling only the, the regular base? It's amazing. Send us like free and they send us free. And I'm like, oh shit, that's it, it's a lot of stuff. Um, but okay. uh, we did it. Awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. hard. Awesome. So, so what does this one look like, this creative? You're about this creative short. is very simplistic and yet uh, let's just see it. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, so just the opening, you see like a dirty so, mattress. So and, she's in a very dirty mattress and then yeah. she, she, she transforms to, to a new, lying down in a new mattress. And then you're showing the mattress being pumped up. Uh, yeah, exactly. Each pillows yeah. included. Somebody who's really, really comfy, soft, but solid. Best ever. Best sleep ever. 750,000 sleepers, and then your Amazon reviews, Google trusted yeah. reviews. Okay, it makes uh, sense. Actually, you can do it like a landing page. So you have exactly, this is the title. That's the key value. New mattress from uh, 499 um, Then you answer questions, basically, that the, mm-hmm. the free shipping, uh, the forever warranty, and so on. Mm-hmm. And in the end, you have, uh, ah, okay, additional benefits, and then symbol of trust, which is the 75 k mm-hmm. the reviews, uh, the Amazon, and so on. So the structure is very simple. It's a line page structure, but what you show, because apparently the, the mattress, the, you know, being pumped stuff, people like, love it. I don't know why, but we tested it multiple times. So, it's, so that's what we, we shoot. Yeah. Uh, and the, all, the dirty mattress uh, with the girls sleeping on it is uh, getting a lot of reactions. Like you see there, I don't know, this is one creative. Yep. And... Um, we be, frankly, we make it dirty every time. Like every time we did, we make an edit. We make it a bit dirtier. So it started yeah. like semi, just a bit old, and now uh, the responses are like cracked in mattress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's all actually it's working best the, the more dirty it is. Okay, so you guys are using emojis in your um in in your in your text. Um, so so a few months ago there was there was talk again we need to talk about like a facebook group thing or, you know in facebook groups and also some account managers were, were saying do not use you know um, um emojis uh what's your take on emojis you're, you're using it on, on the nectar one uh, we're using it a lot and we heard the rumor about the emojis and we are like the penalty stuff and we tested with and without and we saw no effect whatsoever um so basically, we use it because it's not, it looks nice and gives us a nice structure. But um, there are a lot of rumors of it, you know, a lot of voodoo. Uh, so in the end, I say, if, if, it's work, if it's working, it's working. And uh, if it's not, it's not. Okay, okay. Um, do you have any other campaigns you want to show, share with us? Uh, any other, uh, sorry, creative, sorry. I can show the Mixer Creative, which is yeah. very similar. In I, I bought Mixed Styles over Christmas. <laughs> I, I bought, and I was like, who, who did the creatives? Who did the creatives? And, I'm, and, like, and then your ads came up on my Facebook, and I was like, ah, you guys did it. And I just said I had to talk, to, I had to bring you up onto the show. Um, so, so, yeah, um, yeah. Um, so what does it look like? What was the thinking there? Because what, what it sold to me was like, you know, um, Christmas was a time for family and what better way to summarize the year than in photos. I agree. That, but that was it. It was very emotional for me. And, and then I, I just bought it. I just bought, you know, a few of them, a set. 
uh, because it's a great product, first of all. Like, yeah. uh, I don't have them because I don't have ph- photos at home, but my partner had, like, tons of them. And it, we yeah. bought it, by the way. It's not like we took from the <laughs> mix yeah. uh, But we have a lot in the office. And when we started with them, uh, we were kind of new to the video stuff. And a lot of people told us, uh, do emotional stuff, do family, do... And we were stupid back then. So that's what we did. The first shot was uh, family with a baby and blah, 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 and so on, which was important, but not as. Because after, uh, like, we tried the creative, it was completely utter failure. Uh, Mixer were very angry, blah, blah. Uh, but the seventh edition, I told, like, to the editor, I told him, fuck this, sorry. Uh, Let's, let's cut all the bullshit. Let's focus only on the product. Show me like the, the hand putting the, the product on the wall. Later on, we're going to show the family and so on. But first of all, I want to understand what I'm seeing here, um, <clears throat> what I'm getting and answering the question. Because a lot of people ask about the size and a lot of people ask about the shipping. And so I say, okay, let's do it like a landing page. Show me, show me what it's got. So in this creative, uh, that's basically should be the first frame, the sticking. Yep. You pick them, we ship them. It's very simple. I show exactly the sticky because people asked about the sticky. I show the re-sticking because people asked about the re-sticking. I show the mm. size because people asked about the size. I say, I show that it leaves no marks because everything came from user feedback. So yeah. this, uh, it's basically like Lego blocks. We, yeah. uh, we first of all, we show what, what's, what matters and then we show what's, what are the pain points and we just add them and we play with the order based on the importance. And the importance, so we just do when, weighted counting. When did you do the, the user feedback? Did you do it after the first creative failed or had you done it before the first creative? Uh, before the first creative mix, there was a smallish account with no data at all. So okay. we, we knew nothing. But after the first, the, basically after the fourth creative, like the first ver- fourth version of the first creative failed, uh, we started doing rethinking, we failed twice more, and then we had like the seventh version, which was very focused. And then, and then we got tons of traffic. Let's say we sp- started with X spent per month, and months after we were, the entire process was a month, by the way, it's not like very long. Uh, and then we have four X spent per month, so the comments were like four, four X time, and we saw tons of feedback, and then we know, okay, the size thing is super important to people. How it works is super important. So we did like a quick reshooting and we just added the specific segments. This is like a very, uh, this is from 2018. This is like uh, production number six or seven of the oh. same. Uh, st- so we know exactly what we're doing right here. But the first version looks <clears throat> very ugly. It was shot in a very low quality camera. Let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. Clavio is a growth marketing platform that powers over 25,000 online businesses. Clavio understands every single customer interaction and empowers brands to create more personalized marketing moments. Listen, analyze, and act on your customer data with Clavio. Visit clavio.com forward slash 2x. Um. But as the brand grew, we have to like invest much more. And, and you uh, did all this from your studios, or if, well, with your your production team did all, all of this. Yeah, the kids, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, we have a lot of photos of the director like playing with the kids because kids uh, never shoot kids. It's it's insane. Uh, never again. <laughs> <laughs> the unpredictability is yeah. You're, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. It was uh, uh, it was insane. Actually, in this we had like nine kids on set. Okay. Uh, because we, we, you can't really shoot them for long and um, you have to have spares because it, it was like one very beautiful kid and so on and uh, he didn't want to act. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, so we have to kick for a kick, like escort them yeah. to their mama. We did pay them um, and walk in shifts. But those three girls were like the best actors. So they stayed. Yeah, they're naturals. They're yeah. very, 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 very natural. Okay. Um, so do you have it? Do you, want to, do, you, do you want us to go through one more or... Um, I can show a failure. I can show like uh, okay. an ad that, uh, like I shared it on my LinkedIn and I got like tons of calls from people and a lot of CEOs and blah, blah. And it's amazing. And that's how we totally fucked up and didn't understand the product. It's not uh, mm. e-commerce uh, classical, but there is a company named Taylor Brands. Taylor Brands uh, create basically automatic logo for, for you and uh, old branding package and so on. It's great for small businesses. Right yeah. now with the COVID, they're actually prospering because uh, a lot of people are t- opening online brands. Uh, and when we, fo- we thought about it, we say, okay, our issue is that uh, 
like as a company, we come to our artists and they give us like a lot of uh, their own art, but not what we want, not performance, not what we actually need. Uh, so instead of actually asking Taylor brand clients, why do they come to Taylor brands, which we discover later, the, the best performing creative is very different than this one. Uh, we did something that based on our own experience that I think it's look amazing. I'm going to play it for a second. <laughs> okay, so he's 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 very angry. He's trying to make <laughs> Taylor Brand make the logo for free. They only to love it. Unlimited revision, zero drama. Okay, okay. <laughs> that that frustration of of logo revisions was 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 put on there. Yeah, and, so and that's a company, but but yeah. the clients are not company. The clients are a small, you know, a small business that they're gonna, frankly, they're gonna try to create their own logo using paint. <laughs> and our best creative uh, was like showing someone doing like horrendous create a logo via paint, like just a screen, and then showing like, no, <laughs> let's do instead like the professional one. And it's, you know, free pay only if you love it and so on. And yeah. that was like amazing result. Yeah. So, so there's a humor bit and there's, you know, um, there's a, there's a fine line to, to strike. Now, if we sort of take that humor bit in, in creatives and we look at what happened to dollar shave club on YouTube, um, that, that, that's insane in terms of, and, and many, yes. many brands have tried to mimic them, but they have failed. Well, because the, uh, the CEO of dollar shave club was a marketer for years and, um, uh, Basically, there are geniuses in the world. Like, there are people, uh, like, again, Dan Harmon from Harmon Brothers, which I'm a big fan. I'm not going to imitate them because they're doing something totally different, but uh, they did Squatty Potty, which is an amazing ad, uh, mm. uh, and a lot of other stuff. And they expert in storytelling and humor and creating, like, viral video. Uh, they mm. do with failures, but th their successes are so amazing. So, uh, and what I feel about storytelling in creative like uh, Do Dollar Shave Club, like uh, uh, Harmon and so on. It's a gamble. It's way too expensive. Uh, and the incremental results, um, it, it's simply, you have to be a genius to make it. Basically, it's like, it's like making a Hollywood movie. It's not the money yeah. you put. You also, yeah. you also need the geniuses. And you can't really formulate it. There's a risk. Yeah. <laughs> massive, massive risk. Like uh, what we do, I don't know, for each creative, let's say it's a total uh, horrendous. Okay, it took me a month to do it and it cost me 20K. It's, it, I can live with that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I saw a company that took, uh, okay, I'm not going to say, took another company, paid them, a good company, they paid them uh, 200K, took a six months and failed. And it's not something you can, you know, you can, you, you don't want to be the, be the guy that telling the CEO that we failed with the 200k production. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those small failures are better, better managed. You get feedback, and you could also stand quicker to to repair and you know rectify real quick and you mm -hmm. know um, find a winner eventually. Okay, my final question is Moshe, why are you not on? Um, I think we'll we'll stop sharing here. Um, so why are you not on, um, on like Facebook groups? Oh, this is a tricky question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because everyone is there. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of data that is um, unsubstantial and not based on, on reality. There are a lot of voodoo. Like I saw the Shopify group, for example, and we used to yeah. do a lot of, uh, we still do a lot of Shopify. And they have those methods for campaign testing with engagement, a lot of stuff that I, I don't want to be even exposed to it. Yeah, exactly. um, because in the end, I, like I, I, in the beginning, I was very humble and I came to learn. And, said, and then I said, no, I, like, I manage like 100,000 per, per month. I, I know actually what they're doing. They're, they're talking to me about tests with $100. I know it's a bad testing method. I know they yeah. don't have significant data. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of noise and not enough signal. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, let's briefly talk about what what it entails. How long are you testing? How long does the testing phase take? One, and um, how much does it take? And um, you know, how many iterations do you go through in a typical test? Okay, so I think that's where we're very different than uh, most most Facebook uh, whatever marketer. Uh, a lot of people are believe in testing for testing, like they do hundreds of versions or via automated tools or a lot of text and so on. 
And then in the end, something will win by five or 10%. Uh, we don't aim to win by five. Like a version should be at least 20% better, better, I mean, performance-wise. Uh, and performance is uh, either, again, cutting CPA or double the, the delivery, but something meaningful in real money, not CTR or whatever, uh, than the previous version. So for us, if you test and, and there is no change, you failed, you did bad thing. Why? Because every creator loves to do like, you know, uh, I'm sorry, but masturbate and create a finer and finer version that are basically the same. So we believe, first of all, do a big test. Like when we used to do a website years ago, it wasn't like change the button from red to blue. It was like delete the entire website, do the entire, uh, totally entire flow. That's something that's gonna make a change. Yeah. But if you're gonna just move a button from here to there, nothing's gonna happen. Same with the version. We don't uh, say, uh, okay, I have this version, what will happen if I play with this frame and move it? No, you have to change something significant. If it looks the same, if I can't really differentiate, don't do it. Uh, about how do you structure the campaigns? Uh, don't, uh, we prefer no, no more than two uh, ads in the same ad set. Yeah. Uh, contender and, uh, and winner, always. Like always you have one contender and one winner, but not like three or five or six. Why? Because then the results are insignificant. It takes a while to Facebook to optimize. Again, not multiple small tests, one big test every time. Like, mm. um, and then when you have a winner, it's a, a really winner. The entire account, you know, is getting like a massive pump and everything is amazing. Uh, mm. Otherwise, testing is... Um, you know, people just test without hypothesis. They're, they don't have like, why, are you, why am I testing? They just do yeah. random stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff, Moshe. We could go on and on and on about this, but um, I am extending a second invite to you um, at some point in the future to specifically talk about Snapchat advertising um, whenever, you know, is convenient for you. This episode has been fantastic. You know, thank you for sharing your very, very unique take. And I would say um, refreshing take on creative-led media buying on the Facebook advertising platform. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's been a true pleasure. All right, cheers. Ciao.